Bingo, we're back. We're here on Think Tech Community Matters on a given Monday at the 11 o'clock block. And we have Pedro Haro. He's with uh, Caring Across Generations. And Kathy Jaycox, she's with FATE, which is Faith Action for Community Equity. I get that right? That's right. All right, you guys. And they are doing a bill in the ledge called Kupuna Caregivers. Correct. And we are here to talk about that. Um, let me preface it by saying everyone knows that the life of Kupuna in our community ain't what it used to be. You know, in the, in the earlier generations, in the more ethnic uh, family structures of the 30s, 40s, 50s, I guess you'd say, in, uh, in the 20th century, um, we had people taking care of their, of their elders. And it was a, not only an obligation, but a fact. Um, over time, however, in the nuclear age, um, they've, they've left, the uh, younger people have left uh, or are unable or unwilling to do that in the same numbers and percentages as they used to be. <clears throat> and the result is that a lot of Kupuna uh, need care uh, from the outside and they don't necessarily have the money for it. And that's very tragic because you have Kupuna, middle class Kupuna, who've worked all their lives fingers to the bone all their lives. They don't have the money to take care of themselves in their, in their elder years. And we must, uh, as a humane and moral society, we must do something about it. And the problem is getting worse. And these guys, uh, Pedro and uh, Kathy, are collaborating for a bill to help make it better. So welcome in all ways to the show, you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Pedro, tell us about the bill. So this is Senate Bill 534 and its companion bill, House Bill 607. And what it does is it establishes the Kapuna Caregivers Program, which pro provides $70 a day as a benefit to working families um, who need assistance with caregiving. Now we're talking about the sandwich generation is what we call them. These are people who are taking care of their kupuna at home, maybe their parents, their grandparents, and also maybe have some working, some children in school, and then they're working full-time jobs in the middle. So the idea is that they're stuck, not just with all of this financial stress, but also this emotional stress. We find that caregivers a lot of times put their own health needs aside um, to be able to take care of those that they're taking care mm -hmm. of. So this is definitely a population that needs that help. We think that the legislature is in a good place this year to be able to pass that. What kind of help? Can you, can you put yourself in the, in the skin of an elderly person and be old, maybe a little like me, <laughs> and tell me how my life is that I require care? Yeah. So some of the people that we talked about, and, and Kathy can definitely fill in, um, are people who need things on an everyday basis. People who, some people who have um, problems getting in and out of their bed, who have problems bathing, maybe preparing their own food, and so their caregivers might have to take those responsibilities. Abilities. Yeah. yeah. Kathy, have, this is evidence-based legislation. So what's the evidence that you have to demonstrate the problem? Well, for one thing, we know that every eight seconds, somebody is turning 65. We know that here in Hawaii, by 2020, we will have nearly 300,000 people age 65 and older. That's a substantial part of the so population. So that is a huge percentage of our math. population. If there's 1.2, just roughing it, <coughs> 1.2, that means 25% of the yeah. population is, is elderly. Exactly, exactly. Um, and uh, you asked about, you know, what kind of care might they need, and that's uh, one of the good things about this bill, I think, is it uses existing definitions so that a person has to be, I think, is it three of the daily life skills, if there are at least three that they cannot do themselves, feed themselves, bathe themselves, whatever, um, then that would qualify the, the sick person for help. The other thing is, for this bill, the, financially, they would be people who are not so low income that they would already qualify for Medicaid, but just kind of above that level where um, they don't really have enough money to pay for full-time caregivers at home, um, which is why the family member is helping in the first place. But the beauty of this bill, we think, is that um, if you as an employer, you've got a, a great employee, 
but now you're losing that employee because she's taking time the sandwich off generation to take care Pedro's of her, Pedro's term the her, sandwich right. generation yeah and so Means now you you're hurting and, as and get as a along business. on the sandwich <laughs> <laughs> you're hurting as a business because she's having to take so much time off to care so this bill would enable her to not have to take so much time off work because her parent or grandparent or whoever right. she was so caring for productive. would be eligible and the employer for the $70 be happy about a day. That exactly. Because lose the employee. Exactly. And there are so many employees that give it up. They give up their jobs. That's right. So they can stay at that's home. That's right. Uh, this would make a more productive economy, don't you think? Exactly. Yeah. Well, and that's actually what we're hearing from businesses. We have several businesses who are saying, this makes sense to us. And, and you know, for in a different kind of ways. They want to be productive and they want to be able to reduce absenteeism and even uh, presenteeism where people are present at their job but their mind is somewhere else because yeah, they have sure. so many caregiving all the time and, and you know if you're driving heavy machinery or you're making paperwork it's easy to make mistakes so they want to reduce that but they also want to take care of their workers and so th the idea is with this is that they're able to do both and so it makes sense for business it makes sense for workers it makes sense for the kupuna it makes sense for family it makes sense for Hawaii like you're saying like you were saying earlier it's it's part of our culture right it's part of a lot it's of our culture but we are unable to realize it that's in recent it. years yes that's it we got to get back to it. This is back to, you know, a more humane expression of our culture. Yeah, that's you know. it. So let's talk about the, the qualification, Kathy. You, talk, you know, the, the elder person has to be qualified as, an, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, an appropriate recipient right. of this benefit. Right. How, who does that and how is it done? So um, uh, the state already has uh, a Kapuna Care program. So this would be administered through that program. So the, the same um, tests that they use about, um, you know, which skills are you unable to do on your own, they would use those. So it's already in place. Too. Yeah, so in that sense, yeah, we're not having to start from scratch. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like I said, the other qualification for the the person in need of care would be that financially they're not so low that they're Medicaid, but they're just barely above that so that they don't have the money. And, and the other part, just to add on to what Kathy said, so what makes this different than any of the other programs is that their caregiver has to be working 30 hours or more right. a week. So that it adds the component that this, this help, this bill, while it will benefit the kupuna, it's really supposed to provide care to the caregivers who have really not have had any other place to turn to, who say, hey, listen, I need help too. I, I'm working a full-time job, yeah. going home, and, and I working. don't have the money to hire a caregiver exactly. because there aren't enough of them, and they're expensive. Right. Exactly. You know? Right. Yeah. Footnote, by the way, um, about Medicaid. You mentioned Medicaid. Um, my observation is that Medicaid is in some jeopardy in the, in the Trump administration. Well. Another observation is that the state legislature has to sort of try to get a handle on the trajectory of the Trump administration and how the Trump administration is going to cut the federal social safety net. Uh, and that may be one way they do it. And we have to look carefully at that and figure out how we're going to be resilient against cuts at the federal level under Donald Trump. Um, so this is one of those bills, I would say, that fits neatly in the category of trying to deal with the possibility of loss of benefits at, at the federal level. I don't know if you've thought about that, but certainly yeah. there are members of the legislature who have thought about that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think it's FACE and, and other organizations have been working on, on elder care, Kupuna care, for the last 21 years. So it makes sense before Trump uh, was in the picture, and it makes even more sense now that, now that he is in the picture. And I think all of of us are trying to figure out how do we make sense of a world that looks and feels a little bit different to us and, and at times it's very um, unnerving to not know what the future funding will look like for the states, what the federal structure of some of these organizations would look like. And we're trying to make sure that our, you know, people in Hawaii still have a place to turn to, that, that the world won't change that much, that they won't have any place to turn to. So um, I just want to get a handle on the cost of it. $70, do you have a prediction as to how many people would qualify for the benefits and therefore how much it would cost out of the state funds? What is being appropriated right now is $600,000 for its first program year, which would be from June to the ending of 2017. And then in 2018, $6 million will come into the fund to be able to provide the services for the people. So they need that ramp up money and that ramp up time to be able to set up the infrastructure. Um, and then $6 million to be able to 
to help those those families. We think it's a we think it's not the end all be all. We think it's a step in the right direction. We're hoping during that first year that we can help at least a thousand families and then be able to build up the data to be able to really make it an evidence based program that we can come back to the legislature and say look at the success and look at the need that we have in the state. Because what we know is there's a, over 150,000 working caregivers in the state. So um, starting with 1,000 1, is certainly a step in the right direction, but it won't be enough. Mm -hmm. And so what we're able to do is we're able to get data, we're able to get the need, the response, be able to make tweaks, and then hopefully come back to the legislature and figure out what we can do next. So uh, $6 million per annum for now. Mm -hmm. It may be more later, depending on what you find That's in, what we're hoping, in, yeah. in an examination of this issue on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, can we afford that? We haven't paid uh, the um, employee's retirement system. We have um, $10, 12000000000 billion to go on rail. Who knows, who knows how much? <laughs> uh, nobody knows how much. Um, we have, all, we have the, the roads. You know, forget about rail for a minute. We have the roads. It's going to cost a lot of money to keep the roads in decent shape, and I could go on. I mean, we have unfunded liabilities of something um, over $40 billion coming soon. Can we afford this? Can we afford not to? I mean, the idea is that in Hawaii, we have the oldest living population. And normally that would be a wonderful thing, right? You'd think that growing older is that one thing that you get for free in life. That's the one thing that you're guaranteed, that in taxes, right? But it, the reality is that we're paying about $10,000 more in this state than anywhere else in the nation to do home health care. We know that the majority of our kupuna cannot afford to go into uh, daycare facility for you know where they can live 24 hours a day and and have every all of those needs taken care of that our our families are taking up that responsibility so is the answer do we have to compete against the rail i don't think we should because i think that the silver tsunami what, what we're calling it the silver tsunami is here and it's only going to get bigger and bigger so the point is can we afford not to do this now how much of what he said do you agree with, Kathy? <laughs> I totally agree. I thought you'd say that. <laughs> Let's take a short break. We'll come back and we'll talk about your event, okay. which is coming okay. what, tomorrow. tomorrow. This is yes. hot news. Yeah. That's uh, Pedro Ujaro and uh, Kathy Jaycox talking about the Kupuna Caregiver Bill. We'll be right back. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, inviting you to join us as we navigate the journey the journey to the end of life. The journey of looking at our possibilities of choices and options. And this is a conversation. We want you to join us in this conversation as we visit with people of different traditions, different religions, and different cultures and see what they do toward the end of life. It is a wonderful time to enjoy, to talk about things that we don't usually talk about and that we should talk about before the intensive care, as well as the elephant in the room. The elephant in the room is health care, and we really need to look at that as we approach the end of life. So join us as we navigate the journey. Aloha. Bingo, we're back. I knew we'd come back. I said we'd come back. <laughs> this is uh, Pedro Haro uh, and Kathy uh, Jaycox talking about the Kupuna Caregiver Bill. Very important kinds of legislation. To follow up on what you said a minute ago, uh, Pedro, is uh, priorities for state you know, expenses. What could be more important than taking care of our own people? You know, never forget, we live in a state where the cost of occupancy and land, it's too high. Someday we got to fix that. Yeah. And we live in a state where the, where the wages are too low. We got to fix that. Yeah. In the meantime, there's a pincer movement, a pinch going on. And that pinch hurts the kupuna more than anyone else. And we really have to address it. Absolutely have to. So I commend you guys on your, your choice of issues and initiatives. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So let's talk about uh, tomorrow, um, your event. What, what is your event? Where is it? What is going to happen? Well, tomorrow we have a rally where we're going to have advocates from a whole bunch of different organizations. We have AARP, we have Local 5, ILW, we have uh, Society of Retired Individuals, we have Caring Across Generations, FACE are organize, helping organize it. Um, and what we're 
we're hoping to be able to do is to be able to create that priority for legislators to be able to say, we know that there's a lot of competing priorities. We know there's rail. We know there's other things that are sucking up uh, the air out of the room because they're, they, it's covered in the media so well. But there is a group of individuals that really need your assistance and need your help. And that's really all that it is tomorrow is uniting our voices to let our legislators know that there's enough families that have that care about this. And you know, I hear about this all the time. It, people who are emailing or just like yourself, people who will say, you know, that this is a really important issue. I'm glad that you're taking this up. I'm glad that, you, that you're all working on this. Because we hear time after time caregiver stories. Um, I have a friend who took care of his mother for 10 years, over 10 years, going into dialysis. And he explains how he and his dad would clean her sore wounds. And he said, nobody, nobody helped us with that. He would, he would take care of her during the daytime and then drive the bus at night. Um, oh, that makes you feel really lonesome. Yeah, exactly. To bear that burden, mm -hmm. nobody to help. And he talks about it. And so what this bill will do is that it will provide two to three hours of, of care for a person. And, and I would ask him, I said, what would that have meant to you? He said, it would have meant the difference between life and death said we just felt so alone, unprepared for this. There was no way to plan yeah, for it. We didn't yeah. have the money. We didn't have the, the support. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, even, even if you can imagine the, the tough times in the silver, the silver years, you can't, you can't do more than work and, and try to save. That's all you can do, yeah. and it's yeah. not enough. You were saying, Kathy. Oh, well, I was just going to say, you asked about our event tomorrow. And um, so it's going to be from 10 in the morning till noon um, in the you know, Capitol Rotunda area near the Father Damien statue. And, uh, at what, at 11, 11, we'll be out Sign waving wave. signs. So everybody who's out there driving, drive by and toot your horns. But uh, <laughs> part of the event, we'll be having people like the person uh, that Pedro was just talking about telling their stories uh, as caregivers. And then we'll also be hearing from um, some of our legislators uh, who support this and, uh, you know, other people who have uh, uh, an active role in um, this bill. Yeah, I, I, I know there's a lot of legislators that could, would, and are supporting the bill, but could you mention the champions so that we can give them credit here on the program? Oh, definitely. We definitely want to thank uh, Senator Ross Baker from Maui, who has been able to uh, champion the bill, not just this year, but last year as well on the Senate side. And Representative Greg Takayama, who will be there um, tomorrow to speak on the House side, was has championed. And they both have championed um, several Kupuna, Kupuna issues. Uh, Senator Lessie Hara has also been very supportive and very um, instrumental in a lot of Kupuna issues. Mm -hmm. um, so th there's a multitude. We have, I, I believe, on each side, we have about 25 sponsors for the bill. So it, it really shows the difference in what our legislators believe to be to be of importance, which is what the people believe as well. So you, you've, uh, you've submitted this bill before, or it's been introduced in previous legislators? legislators? We had, yeah. Well, <clears throat> most recently, we had a bill that we submitted last year. Um, but it was a very different bill in that um, it would have been funded with an increase in the GET. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, uh, one half percent increase. But Given yeah, the rail you, issue, that's you, hot. Yeah, so you know where that went last year. But also, the um, you know, we talked earlier about this bill and the fact that <clears throat> it's really a small step and that we, you know, at most we may help a thousand families in the first year or two. But the bill that we had last year was sort of a let's try to do everything at once bill. Yeah. And, um, it was great in that sense that it would have done so much, but it would have taken five years had it passed to accumulate the money in the pot uh, that would have been able to then yeah, pay off the service. Yeah, that's not really workable. So, this is yeah, a now issue. Yeah, mm -hmm. so this, I think, is... Um, better. More, yeah. It's better. Yeah. But let me ask you, you know, uh, I, I'm beginning to see this session as the session of the Kupuna, uh, really, uh, because uh, Marsha Joyner, who uh, appears on our show on a regular basis, um, is uh, trying to advance a bill. Um, uh, it's a death with dignity bill. Mm -hmm. uh, they've been trying to get a bill of that nature passed for 20 years. Uh, but this sounds like a good session for it. Mm -hmm. um, and that would, that would make it easier on a lot of people. Um, and I think the state would be better off for that bill. But my question is, is there, is there an intersection? Is there a relationship? Do you see a common denominator between your bill affecting the lives of Kapuna and the Death with Dignity bill that likewise certainly affects their lives? Well, I, would, <clears throat> I wouldn't tie us to the Death with Dignity bill. Um, I personally have a lot of concerns about that one. But there are, there's a, a group of, um, 
folks like ourselves and, and folks who work with other social service uh, entities, and we call ourselves the Kapuna Caucus, and, and that group meets monthly. And there, uh, there are, uh, there's a total of seven bills that the Kapuna Caucus has said, you know, yes, we will support all of these bills because we see that they all impact services to our seniors that we really care about. Mm -hmm. And what we're seeing, you know, what I see the commonality between all of these different bills that are geared towards Kupuna, towards the elderly population, is that there are different fragments of society that are realizing we have to do something about this. We, well, it's tragic. We're, we're living, we're living longer lifespans, which is wonderful, which is great. But that comes with its own set of, of difficulties and our issues with our with our society. And we're not really set up for that. We just, as a as a community, we really weren't set up to be able to live these longer lifespans and be able to take care with dignity and with care with uh, for our kupuna. So we have to address it, like homelessness. We it's a, it's yes. a problem, a growing problem. We have to. The numbers are you know, formidable, we have to address it. Mm -hmm. So um, among the people who support your bill, there are, I suppose, the caregivers themselves. Uh, the 150,000, did you say? Yeah, I think that's, that's, that's the estimate from AARP, I believe. Yeah, so if they, if they and, and I assume AARP is supporting you. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So are the, are the caregivers going to be down there tomorrow? You'll have a lot of people if they are. Yes, we're hoping, we're hoping, I, we don't know if all 150,000 of them will show up, but, <laughs> but we're hoping that, that at least a few dozen of them will be able to join us to be mm -hmm. able to come in. I mean, one of the things about being a caregiver is that you don't have a lot of free time yeah, to be right. able to that's do that. The so yeah. that's why they have people like us to be able to speak for them, and that's that's a population. I, I heard from a friend who is uh, involved in, in a service organization that, that he says, you know, he's an employer, but he also talked about how service drops dramatically when somebody becomes a caregiver, and saying that's another kind of productivity that we're not looking at. Saying we're, we in our organization we help a lot of people, but as soon as somebody becomes a caregiver, they have very little disposable income, they have very dis uh, little disposable time. All of their time goes into this caregiving so we we have this brain uh, brain drain in another way where people are, are, are having they're not part of the community anymore because they're so yeah. involved in what yeah, they have right. to do we, we need to incentivize them mm -hmm. to spend that time be part of the process and if we don't they won't yeah it's that simple so how do you define a caregiver what is a caregiver is there an existing system or definition to certify caregivers there is a system that, that in order to be able, for, for our bill, <clears throat> in order to be able to receive the $70 benefit, it doesn't go directly to the family. It will go to a certified caregiver that is registered with the state, and they do have a process. Um, when we talk about caregiver, as far as um, they will benefit from this, um, we are talking about unpaid family caregivers who have no formal training, who are just loved ones who are you know, wanting to take care of their, of their loved ones. What is great about this bill, what we think, is that it will incentivize the, the industry of home caregiving, of the professional side. It will be dollars that will, that will infiltrate, infiltrate the, the community that weren't elsewhere, weren't there, and hopefully help those families who wouldn't otherwise have been able to afford those kind of services. So we think that there will be a higher level of trained caregivers, possibly yeah. in areas that, where there is no caregiving. I had a call from somebody on North Shore. They're saying, we're trying to start caregiving business here because we have a huge need, but we don't have um, the type of services out here, and, and nobody's willing to drive out here. So what we're hoping is by putting some of these dollars into the, into those communities, that it will incentivize the industry grow and be able to meet the demand that there is out there. Who who would actually um, implement administer this program? You mentioned. Uh, uh, an executive office on aging, would it be that office that would administer right. this program? That's right. So the executive office on aging is under the Department of Health. It's an office that is that is um, set up by the Department of Health to work on the infrastructure for aging population. And they have a lot of different programs that they, that they are a part of. And some of those is having some county offices that are able to administer some of these programs. So that's what it will fall under. It's under the mm -hmm. executive office. And are they happy to do it? Do they support the bill? They do support the bill. They had some amendments to the last version that was just a little bit technical, you know, let's clean this up and let's clean that up. Yeah. But to them, the idea is that this is a great service. This is something that they have seen. And you know, it's one of those things that makes sense. That when we kind of hear about it, that we say, well, of course it, this makes sense. This, it, it, Of course there's caregivers who have nowhere else to turn to. We should do something 
anything about them, and we right. should do something to help. We have to be in touch and understand and, and sympathize with our community. This is part of that. So I, again, I commend you guys on your choice of issues. But let me take the, the next uh, and last couple of minutes of the show to find out more about you and your organizations. So Kathy, what, okay. wh why are you involved in this issue? Uh, what kinds of issues do you like? What kind of uh, initiatives do you support? What What is uh, FATE, F -A -T -E, Faith Action for Community Equity? What does it do? Okay. Thanks for asking. So um, FACE uh, is an organization that's 21 years old, um, and it is an interfaith uh, group focused on issues of um, social justice. So we currently, uh, and we currently exist on Oahu and Maui. So on Oahu, we have 23 um, member units, we, we call them. It's, it's an organization of organizations. So I don't belong as an individual. You couldn't belong as an individual. But through my church, I belong. Most of the 23 member units are churches. But also, um, we have uh, a developer uh, who focuses on developing affordable housing. We have uh, the uh, local five, the, the folks who work in in, uh, in the hotels and in healthcare. Um, so, uh, and and what FACE does through its member units every year is have what we call listening sessions where people, from the ground up, people start talking about, well, what issues are important? And within each unit, they identify maybe their top three. And then we bring all the units together and say, well, what did we all identify? And then we do the old paper, you know, you've got three post-its and you vote on your top three. And so that's how we choose what issues. And this is one of those For this three. year, this and the other one, which you mentioned already, is affordable housing. So those are FACE's top two issues for this year. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, how about you, Pedro? So I work for an organization called Caring Across Generations. It's a national organization that has uh, influence over a lot of different states. They work on issues, uh, like to think about it as a movement rather than an organization work on issues such as family paid leave, um, long-term care, and the idea is that there should be an infrastructure for working families across the age spectrum, and that there is a lot of these economic issues that impact the working family. Um, we are heading the, the campaign for Care for Our Kupuna um, here locally, and definitely would like to invite any of your viewers to go to our website, careforkupuna.org. That's care, the number four, and kupuna.org. <laughs> uh, I have to explain that because otherwise it gets <laughs> yeah, difficult. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there we have all of the information about this movement, about all the different work that we're doing across the island. And um, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, for, good for, for you. Yeah, you guys are really. dedicated. And you're spot on with this issue. Thank you so much for coming down and talking about it here on Think Tech on Community Matters. That's thank a, you, Pedro Haro and uh, Kathy J. Cox. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.